While ordering a selection of solders to test from China, I also added some other items, including this, well, as it turns out, quite shitty, but a nice concept, uh, waterproof outdoor sort of LED string. And it's very clever because they've taken a standard little outdoor light or underwater light like this. And these are designed to... Uh, basically take a, a couple, one or two, uh, two or three, two lithium cells, and it's, then it's a very simple circuit board with an LED in it. In this case, it does actually have a resistor as well. But what they've done, they've taken this standard housing, which is properly watertight, it's got an O-ring, and it really does seal tightly. What they've done is take that, and they've drilled a hole in the end, they've stuck some of the copper wire LEDs up, and then they've... Uh, soldered them onto the circuit board inside here. It's a bit messy in here because I've had to fix it. And that involved taking it completely to bits, including the hot melt glue. Uh, but they've then held the circuit board out a wee bit, put some hot melt glue into here, and then pushed it in so that it seals. And you can see a slight thread has come out with the wires, but it's made it completely watertight. So when this is screwed together with the lithium cell in it, rechargeable or not, uh, you can then uh, close it up and the LEDs will light. And this one is just a terrible holder. Everything was wrong with it, including a snapped wire just where it went, on, went onto the circuit board. So, yes, I spent a bit more time messing around with that than I should have. I thought, it would be interesting. Get some and make it myself. Get one of these standard little uh, out waterproof lights and a sort of standard copper wire LED string. This is an also a time that I'm, I'm now needing to replace my solder. This has lasted a oh, good five years maybe this roll. It actually lasts a real long time. So this is a Rapid Electronics in the UK 85-0595. It's just a standard solder. Um, it's 6040 tin lead alloy and I use a little holder like this. You put this cord through and you sit it into the holder like this. It drops in by gravity and then you feed this wire, the solder, through the little hoop there and it just keeps it ready for use. So let's just shove that over there and I shall actually snap a bit off right now. I prefer to just snap a bit off. Not sure why the pink reel is pink but it seems fitting. The new one isn't pink. So let's uh, do this. So we'll take this apart and these are available very cheaply online. They're sometimes called vase lights. This one is rather nice. The wires are actually going to the outside of the spring. Some of them have it inside the spring but this makes it more accessible. So I'm going to heat these solder pads and I'm going to desolder the LED by pulling it out at the same time as I'm heating it. And then I'll probably use the solder sucker to get rid of that excess solder. So heat the solder up and suck and heat the solder up and suck. Oh, didn't quite get it all, not to worry, I'll give another go. There we go. How's that? Hold up to the light, take a look through it. Yes, I can see through. So the wires will go in. So now I'm going to feed the wires. Actually, you know what? Do I keep this white thing? It's a little white disc for prettiness. Ah, oh, yes, I'll keep it. So I'm going to feed the wires through. I've already tested these by holding them across a lithium cell. I'll do it again, in fact. Uh, so by holding it across a lithium cell, you can see them lighting when the polarity is correct. And I've put a wee red dot on the end there. It's not very visible. So I'm going to feed that through there. I've already tinned the end of the wires too. These were very receptive to the solder uh, and the insulation just uh, peeled back when I soldered them. So that's also very good. So let's uh, get the solder in on that. Solder iron. And let's see if we can actually solder onto the bit I'd cleared, which I think I've managed to do. The other wire goes to the other side of that. I like the idea of this because, uh, particularly if you used uh, the rechargeable 2032s, this one has a resistor in series as well. The other one didn't. Is this going to go through because... Oh, it has. It's gone through. Uh, so that should actually make it run a wee bit dimmer but last a lot longer. So let's uh, solder that. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to trim the tops of those wires down. so that the battery doesn't squish against them when it's closed in. Now, theoretically, if I just fold these wires in a bit... Oh, you know what? I've actually melted that wire into the case. Oh no, I can't believe I've done that. Rightio, slight mess up here. 
I'm going to have to heat this wire again just to actually get it out of the case. It's melted into the side here. That's something to look out for. Let's uh, actually solder that wire in then now that I've done that. That's a bit annoying. Now, videos. Do you guys prefer longer videos or shorter videos? Because I've been making longer and longer videos and more technical videos. And I know some people like the longer videos, but some people prefer the shorter videos in a sort of grab one before you go to sleep type sort of context. So if you prefer longer videos, uh, give this video a thumbs up. If you prefer shorter videos, give it a thumbs down. That's a good way to assess. So that's the wire soldered in. Uh, I could test this now. Let's test it now before I glue it together. Uh, and let's screw the battery in. Oh, let's not try and screw this up so much. I'm screwing everything up, aren't I? That's working fine. So I'm going to use the hot melt glue now. I have the hot melt glue gun handy. I bought this hot melt glue purely because Ave did a review of it. It's the Ryobi rechargeable. It takes the OnePlus batteries. And uh, I think Ave might have been slightly scathing of it, although he was impressed with its performance. I was certainly impressed with its performance. Uh, and it's been great. I've used it quite a lot. It's very handy having it on call. Now, to uh, hold that in while it, the glue gets cold, I'm just going to screw this in. Might as well screw it and have it light up. And you can see the glue has gone all clear in there. Well, it'll go uh, mottled after a while. But uh, as I pulled that wire down, it also pulled a wee stem of the glue out. It doesn't really matter. I shall turn that hot melt glue gun off now. And that was it. That was a very easy project to convert these little waterproof lights to uh, drive a string of the LED. Now, it's also worth mentioning that these little copper strings, the ends of them, they often just crop them short but leave them right next to each other. It's worth either cropping them to a different length or actually just folding them away from each other. Otherwise, they can either shorten stuff or the water when it beads on them, if you use these outdoors, will just uh, cause a bit of corrosion at the end. Other than that, I've found these lights to be extremely reliable outdoors. So that is actually a very good result. Uh, I'm just going to take the exposure off and I'm going to turn the lights off and you'll see that, uh, yep, that's that is quite a nice effect and completely waterproof. You could put in one or two cells depending on the brightness you wanted because they tend to rely on the internal impedance of the lithium button cells, but one will last a very good length of time, particularly with the green LED, which tends to have a slightly lower forward voltage than the white LEDs. So that's a good result.